I'm Alex Paul, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Talking Time Pieces, where we talk about watch collecting and horology. Today, we're going to take a look at a refugee from the past, a hand-wound chronograph uh, based on the uh, Valjoux 7733 uh, movement. Quite popular in the 70s, the uh, 7733 was a mainstream off-the-shelf movement that came out in about 69, I believe, uh, based on an earlier Venus movement that eventually became the Valjoux 7750 that we all know and love today. So let's turn the camera around and take a close-up look at and in this really nice watch. Uh, but before we go... And turn the camera around uh, please remember to subscribe if you like this show it really does help the channel the more subscribers the better we get treated by YouTube so let's turn the camera around so here is the uh, chrono sport chronograph um, as I was saying this is actually just a company that somebody threw together bought parts out of a catalog and made this watch, which was very commonplace in the 70s and actually ties into the story of the Valjoux 7733. Now, the whole aspect of watchmaking back in those old-timey days, I shouldn't say old-timey days, but then again, that is uh, over 50, about 50 years ago, um, it was quite common to make watches off the shelf, parts built, you know, in other words, with no internal horological uh, basis beyond being able to uh, put pieces together and possibly do some finishing work, possibly. Um, this Walkman, for example, is a perfect example of that whole philosophy as well. Walkman uh, developed his brand by uh, bringing in parts from Europe and uh, assembling them in the United States and selling them under his name and under other names, for all I know. This uh, Chronosport could have been a Walkman sale item as well. Um, but the whole aspect of off-the-shelf parts making watches was not uncommon. In fact, the reason the Tag Heuer Monaco, the, among the first automatic chronographs ever made, um, Jack Heuer found that case and someone had just come out with it it was available for sale uh his company didn't make it but someone else developed it and his company jumped on the opportunity to get it but um yeah the actual design of the monaco was primarily the movement which was a consortium by the way now um Interestingly, Walkman was wound up getting bought by the company that eventually wound up becoming Breitling. So um, Walkmans are considered uh, collectible because of their heritage. And that actually is what I wanted to point out with the uh, Valjoux 7733. You know, in anthropology, they talk about human evolution and the missing link. Um, actually, the Valjoux 7733 is the found link between the uh, watchmaking of, say, pre-courts, crisis and watchmaking of a post court crisis as it were um the value 7733 is actually based on the venus 180 188 it was based on the venus 188 and which is an interesting aspect because venus is a company with tremendous fingerprints in horology because the seagull um, chronographs, the column wheel chronographs that they make are all based on the old Venus chronograph movement that they sold the plans to the Chinese for. So the uh, 7733 in here is based on a Venus movement and then the 7733 wound up becoming the basis for the Valjoux 7750 which is such a popular powerful workhorse movement that you can still buy watches with a Valjoux 7750 in them today. Um, in the case of this IWC Pilot, they finish it very, very um, aggressively after they buy it, so to make it their own. But there's a Valjoux 7750 in this watch, a direct uh, lineal descendant of the 7733, because once um, El Primero came out, the Zenith El Primero came out, the uh, Seiko Pogue, 
the reason they call it the Pogue is because uh, Colonel Pogue took it to space. I forget the actual model, but that was the first uh, automatic chronograph, arguably, because it uh, potentially beat everybody by a couple of months. But since all three of those watches came out in the same uh, season, as it were, I consider it a tie, in my opinion. But with the El Primero and the Pogue being superior to the Monaco because they're integrated movements, not um, modular movements like the Monaco. Now, the... 7733, this is a um, 3 hertz beat, so it's actually a relatively slow beat for a chronograph. Chronographs nowadays tend to have higher beats. The 7750 has a uh, 4 hertz beat, 8 times a second. This is a uh, 3 hertz beat, 6 times a second. Let's zoom in a little bit and take a look at the face on this. Um, one of the nice things about these watches is that they had very interesting and charming faces because they wanted to distinguish themselves from the other products that had the exact same case and the exact same movement. So um, a lot of the watches from the 70s tend to be a little more uh, flamboyant, uh, fun looking, um, interesting because yeah, that's what their claim to fame was. They weren't um, saying, oh, well, we've taken the, the Value 7733 in here and we've uh, tweaked it and done things to it and engraved the rotor. Nah, back in those days, it did not happen. In fact, that was the whole thing about the uh, real impact of the quartz crisis. The people who suffered the most were these companies, the companies that were using these readily available, good quality, off-the-shelf movements to make their own watches. They were the first to be destroyed by the quartz crisis because they couldn't keep up in cost-effectiveness with the quartz watches, and they weren't big enough like... Uh, companies that had their own manufacturing like Omega to try to, or Tag Heuer, for example, to try to keep up. Um, actually, it was Heuer, and because of the casualties during the court crisis, wound up getting bought by Tag. Uh, so let's turn this around and take a look inside. Okay, all right, and there we go. There's the movement in all its glory. Um, just like the 7750, it's a cam actuated piece. Um, and you're going to see, for example, in a lot of watches, this like V-shaped bridge. You see it in a lot of pieces because uh, you need to hold those primary wheels together. Um, some try to make them flamboyant, but you can see this is a very plain Jane, no nonsense, functional movement. And as you see, the uh, wheel beats away in there pretty slowly. It's a three hertz, so it's only six beats a second, but it gets the job done. Chronographs tend to run higher beat rates nowadays because you want the second split more finely so you can be more accurate with your chronograph. But um, back then, just having a chronograph was awesomely cool and different. Um, so they weren't that concerned about the beat rate. Like I said, the higher end manufacturers did. The El Primero was a five hertz, is still a five hertz, 10 beats a second. And some of their uh, higher models beat faster than that. But um, the 7733 is just a old school workhorse hand wound chronograph, which became the value 7750 by primarily just adding uh, chrono, you know, self-winding functionality. I mean, they had to rework the movement uh, to make it a self-winding movement, but at its core, the 7750 is actually this movement. Um, let's see, do we have any kind of markings? Yeah, there's a marking here. If you see on the edge, it's uh, there are some markings that talk about the um, number of joules. Here we go, there we go, that's a little bit better angle. Let me see if we can zoom in a little bit more and catch that. But it tells you the number of joules that are in it and um, that it says 7733. So um, really interesting piece of horology. And even though this is a 50 year old watch, it still runs well and can be easily serviced and would give you a lot of fun if you're interested in getting an inexpensive hand-wound chronograph. You know, pick up a vintage Value 7733 watch. There are tons and tons and tons under a lot of different manufacturers. And um, some of them are quite uh, famous manufacturers that are still in business today. Uh, so, and some of them obviously like this Chronosport are not. 
So let's put the back back on, do some measurements, and throw it on the wrist to get a little bit of an idea what kind of uh, wrist presence this watch has. Tighten it up a little bit now, tighten it the rest of the way later. It's always important to have good tools because then you don't scratch your stuff. Tools that fit your equipment properly, I mean tools that fit the watch properly, tools that um, fit the spaces in the watch properly, don't jump out of the grooves and scratch your watch or um, wobble in the screw um, space, you know, in other words, Anytime a tool doesn't fit well is an opportunity for damaging your watch. So always try to get uh, decent tools and use proper tools when you are working on a watch. So let's take a look at how big this thing is. Boom, boom. It's a 37 pretty much, which is, you know, still a viable size. If they're trying to get you to wear an Explorer 36, then you can totally wear this watch. Um, it's 12 thick, which is not bad. There's no rotor in it to make it thicker. And uh, lug to lug, we're looking at uh, 40, 44 and change. So um, yeah, all in all, it's a decent sized piece and you can still wear it today. Hand wound chronograph. Uh, wristwatch check, I'm wearing my um, Frederic Constant World Timer, which is a really great deal. Arguably the best World Timer you're gonna get for less than $10,000. Uh, okay, I won't say less than 10, definitely the best for less than five. I was just, rec I remembered that um, Gerard Perigo makes a very nice uh, World Timer, and you can get one of those used for about five and change. And I'd say that's also a very nice World Timer, but under 5K, you're not gonna find a better World Timer than this watch, in my humble opinion. In-house movement, uh, one crown operation for all the functionality. I've got a video on this watch in the archive. Please check it out. So let's throw it on the wrist. I have it on a NATO, but obviously you could put any kind of strap on any kind of watch you want. Um, on these vintages, NATOs work very well because they lend themselves to uh, supporting the color schemes of the watch. So. Um, as you see, it sits nicely on the wrist. 37 millimeters is actually a pretty good size for something like this. And because it's a busy watch, it wears a little larger than it is. So um, all in all, it's a really nice piece. So let's turn the camera around and uh, close out the episode. So that was the uh, Chrono Sport great lamented unknown watch company um but the movement inside the 7733 has a impact on horology that is still felt today so if you wanted a good hand wound chronograph that won't break your wallet any of these uh watches will do and um if not at the minimum you know now a little bit more about the heritage of the watches that are available on the market today Thanks for taking the time to watch, and I appreciate your attention. Mm -hmm.